please, please help me. We are talking about a haunting at Preston Castle, also known as simply Preston Castle. A 2014 haunted house movie directed by Martin Rosenberg. Now, Preston Castle um, is actually a real uh, facility and it's essentially, it's in the States, I thought this was going to be a British film, but no, it's in the States. And it used to be a, a kind of uh, reform school for wayward boys. So like a kind of like, a, uh, almost like a prison, but for kind of orphan boys and that sort of thing. So um, like a halfway house slash prison. Anyway, the legend goes that there was this like uh, uh, boy who was beaten to death by all his classmates and kind of his, his murder was kind of covered up by the people in charge. And he now haunts and wants revenge of this place. So we have these three friends who, um, you know, who decide to go there for reasons. Uh, and they just, you know, they, there's, there's, there's two girls and one guy. And obviously the, the spirit there kind of decides it's going to want, want a piece of them and ultimately starts haunting them, causing them much distress. So that's your basic plot. You think that's quite a slim plot? Yes, this plot is very slim. So let's discuss Preston Class. What works? So first of all, I feel the... Um, the idea of basing us uh, this basing this on a kind of existing real life facility, real life building, is a good one because it kind of does add to that kind of that spooky mythos and stuff like that, and kind of gives you uh, almost gives you the chills thinking about things that may well happen in this real structure. And I've got to say, the kind of the um, the location shooting here and the kind of the set design, all that sort of stuff, looks good. It looks kind of really kind of like uh, like an authentic kind of like dilapidated haunted house. I'm not quite sure where they shot, to be honest, but um, nonetheless, I think it's, it's a good location. It looks the part. Um, and even though this movie takes place, a lot of it in kind of in in, in the in the dark, I feel it still kind of is is well lit enough that you can kind of see what's going on. The movie kind of switches between um, a kind of a traditional kind of style camera angles, although there are some scenes uh, that are kind of shot in the found footage sort of style as they are kind of videoing stuff. The effects are on the minimal side, but I've got to say, although maybe a little bit on the cheaper, they are a little bit cheap. They're not too bad, I have to say. I've seen worse. I think they, they actually look, they look okay for a kind of a low budget uh, kind of horror film. And I thought the mythos that it's kind of building here was, was all pretty good. It's kind of like quite an interesting backstory. And the acting, I've got to say, wasn't too bad either from our kind of our three characters. What doesn't work here? The complete lack of story. There's virtually no story in this. It's just three people go into this kind of facility. The reasons are really sketchy, I've got to say, for, for, for why they go want to go in there. There seems to be literally no reason. And, I, and, I, and it always bothers me when you have an odd number of people and there's like a couple and a single person because who's going to want to be that single person you see it in time and time again in films but you know if you were invited to go out on a um on, a, on a, an expedition and it was couples but you were the single person you go no nah, no thanks or you would bring someone else but in the, in films not just this one but in plenty of films it always seems to be there's always this random one who just seems to be uh you know the the extraneous one and it happens here yeah, but there's no real reason for them to be in there, and uh, they just kind of um, are just wandering around for no real apparent reason outside of the the couple wants to get a little bit of nookie. And that was a that was a weird kind of um, setup because this our kind of our main character, our female character, has just kind of split up with her boyfriend, and then she meets this this guy, one of the, of the other two people, and that just seems to happen really quickly. Um, they go from kind of like her just splitting up and being upset to her uh, trying to get her, you know, her teens pretty much straight away. It seems like a very, very quick transition to me. Um, so the, the, the story doesn't really have a lot of kind of logic to it when it's all said and done. I mean, when, when one, of the, one of the characters ends up kind of going missing and... Um, the, the other two sort of look for her, but they're never really, they're not really like shouting out. I mean, it's just in a building that no one's kind of like shouting out, 
in the top of their voice and things like that. So there's lots of kind of like small little kind of logic issues. Um, it, you know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense ultimately. So it just becomes across as a very generic kind of haunting house film. The this film doesn't have anything really to kind of do differently than any other kind of horror film of its ilk. And I've got to say, this the, the, the complete lack of plot here actually puts it, I would say, below the kind of the average ones that we would have seen. Because uh, although it's it's relatively, um, you know, just a kind of a basic kind of horror film, there's no real kind of reasons for these people to be in there. And it just seems to be a very kind of like uh, virtually non-existent plot. So I'll give this movie a 4 out of 10. It's okay. You know, if you like Haunted House films, but it doesn't do anything new with the genre. And it's particularly kind of frustrating that this movie just seems to be just random people going to a building and things happen. That's it. That's your plot. Four out of ten. Have you seen it? What do you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.